Today we have the differential equation for the damped harmonic oscillator, where the dots represent derivatives with respect to time. The variable x here is the oscillatory variable that could mean, for example, in the case of a swinging pendulum, x is the angle made with the vertical at any given time. Similarly, if you have an oscillating mass spring system, then x would be the displacement of the mass from the mean position at any given time. This gamma factor over here is a damping factor introduced due to frictional forces experienced by the system. And for this video, we're going to be considering linear damping. And omega naught here is the angular frequency of the corresponding undamped system. Oh, and this factor of two here is introduced for convenience purposes that will become clear later. And we're going to solve this using Laplace transforms. So without further delay, we summon the ghost of Laplace and apply his transform to our system. Now using the linearity of the Laplace transform, we now have the Laplace transform of x dot dot plus 2 times gamma times the Laplace transform of x dot plus uh, omega squared, omega naught squared times the Laplace transform of x. And this equals the Laplace transform of 0, which is 0. Now we're going to call the Laplace transform of our function x of t as f of the variable s. And we're just going to call this f for brevity. Now the Laplace transform of x dot here equals s times f minus x at t equal to 0. So we need some information about the initial state or the initial position of the system. So we're just going to call this x naught. And similarly, the Laplace transform of x dot dot here equals s squared times f minus s times x naught minus x dot at zero. So we need some information about the initial velocity as well, which we're going to call x naught dot. Immediately, one gets to appreciate the power of the Laplace transforms. It takes you from a differential equations problem to an algebra problem that's really easy to solve. So using all of our transformations and plugging them into our equation, we have s squared f minus s times x naught minus x naught dot plus 2 times gamma times s times f uh, plus, oh, sorry about that, minus 2 times gamma times x naught plus omega squared uh, f. Okay, cool. And this equals 0. So collecting all of the f terms together and just factoring it out, uh, we're going to have s squared plus 2 times gamma s plus omega squared times f and collecting all the x naught terms as well as the uh, x naught dot terms so we have a okay we've got negative signs with all of them so x naught s minus oh sorry about that plus 2 times gamma and for the uh, x naught dot term we only have just that term okay cool and this equals 0 so we're gonna express f in terms of everything else. So we have f equal to x naught times s plus 2 times gamma divided by uh, s squared plus 2 gamma s plus omega squared. And we also have a positive sign now x naught dot divided by uh, s squared plus 2 times gamma s plus omega squared. Okay, cool. This is nice. This is nice so far. And now we're going to have to revert back to our t world in order to actually solve for x of t. At this stage, we're ready to invoke the inverse Laplace transform. But first, we need to convert what we have into more familiar structures. And the structures we need here are for the Laplace transform of e to the a times t times cosine bt. And this here equals b divided by s minus a squared plus b squared. And the other structure I need is e to the at times sine bt. And this here equals s minus a divided by s minus a squared plus b squared. So let's turn our attention to this term here first and convert it into 
something along the lines of the Laplace transforms we need. So we have s plus 2 gamma divided by s squared plus 2 gamma s plus, wait a second, these are omega nodes. Yeah, the angular frequency for the corresponding undamped harmonic oscillator. So we have this plus omega squared downstairs. And the factor of 2 here allows for some nice completing square arrangements. So we can write this as s plus, I'm just going to break down 2 times gamma into gamma plus gamma divided by s squared plus 2 times gamma s plus all we need is another gamma squared. And to balance that out, I'm going to have to subtract gamma squared as well. So this gives me s plus gamma, and I'm just going to separate the uh, terms in the numerator now. We have s plus gamma divided by s plus gamma squared. Already it looks something more familiar. And we're going to call this uh, omega naught squared minus gamma squared as omega squared, as in just plain old omega with a square on it. So we have omega squared down here plus gamma divided by, again, the same thing, s plus omega squared plus omega squared. Okay, so we know what this thing equals here, and we can now plug it into our equation for f and get some nice results. So this implies that f equals, so we got x naught times s plus gamma divided by s plus gamma squared plus omega squared, and we're, we're also multiplying uh, this term here by x naught, right? So we have plus x naught gamma, and notice that we can factor the reciprocal of this term for, from uh, the x naught dot term as well. So that means we can write this as x naught omega, uh, x naught gamma plus x naught dot multiplied by. 1 by s plus um, uh, s plus gamma squared plus omega squared. Okay, cool. So we need to remember exactly what Laplace transforms we were hunting for. And here they are. So let me just uh, copy and paste them down here for comparison purposes. Here we go. Paste. Um, decrease the size a bit. Okay, cool. So this means that what we have here is this thing, where A equals negative gamma and B equals omega. And the cosine term is what we have in the case of the second term on the right-hand side. So this implies that f equals x naught times the Laplace transform of e to the negative gamma t times sine omega t plus x naught uh, x naught gamma. Why do I keep calling this x naught omega when it's x naught gamma? Anyway, so we have this term plus x naught dot, and we need a factor of omega as well. So we can just expand using omega. So here we go. We have this new term, x naught gamma plus x naught dot divided by gamma times the Laplace transform of e to the negative gamma t times the cosine of gamma t. Okay, cool. So now we can finally invoke the inverse Laplace transform, and that will give us x of t being equal to x naught times e to the negative gamma t times sine omega t plus this awful term here times e to the negative gamma t times the cosine of omega t. And of course, we can factor out this e to the negative gamma t, this damping factor, you may call it. And we can write this as the damping factor times x naught times sine omega t plus x naught gamma plus x naught dot divided by omega times the cosine of omega t. And this is not exactly the form of the solution for x of t you'll find in textbooks. And that's a compressed version that you can obtain from this equation using phase space arguments, but I'm not exactly going to delve into that. Not because of the length concerns of the video, just because I really do like this form. 
I believe it's quite nice because you have all of your initial conditions right in front of you and it just screams the uh, structure for the solution once you plug in all the initial conditions that is so yeah it looks nice it's a nice functional representation of x of t and i hope you enjoyed the video be sure to like and subscribe thank you see you next time